Fulbright Nexus is a new program and uh, that is trying to make the link between science, technology, and society, I would say. In, if you look at the description, it's more science and policy. If you look at the evolution that the, that the science has had in the last 20 years, you would see that there were great advancements in, in all sciences. And as you know, science is funded ultimately by the taxpayer, right? So uh, I think society started to ask, okay, this is wonderful. We're, we're getting all this achievement, all these advancements in, in science, but how good is it for me? How good is it for my country? So if you look in the last 10 or 20 years, all the funding organizations started to also ask scientists to demonstrate that what they were proposing to do in their fields had some social relevance. I think the, the great thing of Nexus, and, and this is why it's so important for the Western Hemisphere, is that it's exactly trying to do that. He's trying to say, yes, let's work with a group of young scientists that are excellent in what they do, but also let's ensure that what they do inform the policy uh, making, the, the, the process of policy making in the Western Hemisphere. The uh, Nexus is unique in, in the sense that uh, it's trying, to, do, it's trying to, to, to make possible that link between advances in science and technology and relevance for society. You know, there, there's a lot of very successful programs, Fulbright is one very good example, that uh, has been crucial in, in, in ensuring that science advances, technology is better. And also there's some, a, a lot of uh, efforts uh, trying to make policy or, or social sciences apply to policies also to advance. But usually those are roads that are separate. Nexus uh, is trying to put them together. That's what's unique, again, of, of the program. Is that it's saying, let's be sure on the one hand, that the scientists understand that what they do must inform policy, but also, let's be sure that people that are uh, uh, in charge of elaborating policy for public or, or private sector, let's be sure that they do it informed by the right uh, information, scientific, technological, etc. The, the candidates that should apply to, to the Nexus program should, of course, be very good in their fields. As you know, this is a very competitive uh, program. But also should have uh, a very open mind, should, should be ready to interact with specialists from other disciplines, should have a, a an interest in, 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 in developing or, or or creating an integrated view of what they do. So if you work in energy, not just look at the windmill that you're trying to develop, but also see what is the impact on the environment, what is the impact for the finances of the country, etc. So it has to be a person that has that kind of, of mentality. And also that is willing is willing to, to directly affect what a policymaker does in, in his or her daily work. I, st I was born in Uruguay, and there I went to college. I went to college and I graduated as an agriculture engineer. And, but I was, from the beginning, I was more interested in research than in activities, say, production or going to farming or activities like that. So I worked for a while in a research institution, a agriculture research center in Uruguay. And the great thing of that is that it opened my mind. You know, I, as, as a scientist, as a researcher, you have to be communicated with the rest of the world. It was a time where we didn't have internet or email or cell phones, so the communication with the rest of the world was through books and through journals, and it was really interesting. 
And so after a few years working there, I decided to, to get a postgraduate uh, degree, and I came to the States. I got a master's uh, degree and a PhD in Virginia in environmental sciences. And it was very nice, the, the, the shift from the agriculture engineering to environmental sciences, because it allowed me to, to open my mind. You know, the engineering, my engineering background, agriculture engineering, was very focused in what, what I was doing and, you know, in trying to improve productivity and increase uh, crop yields, things like that. But then when I went into environmental sciences, I realized that it was necessary to have a much more integrated view of, of what we were doing. For example, I, in Virginia for my dissertation, I, I, I was studying what is the impact of the wheat and maize production in Virginia on the uh, catchment of fish in the Chesapeake Bay, something that I, it was not in my mind when I was studying engineering. But from, from then on, you know, then I went to work in another international organization that was working in the agricultural uh, development. But I, I always liked that approach of, of trying to, to not focus too narrowly in, in, in one aspect of the science, but to try to have an integrated view. And that's how I ended in, in Colombia six years ago in this institute that uh, does research on climate and society. I found out about the program, the Nexus program, through a phone call. Jenny, Jenny Verdaguer from Fulbright, she called me uh, one day and, and she described this problem that they were conceiving and they were trying to develop. And right away, you know, I was extremely interested because it was very, very similar to the kind of job that I do for Columbia University. Um, Especially, I was especially interested because the program was explicitly directed to improve the link between science and policy, and even more interested because the target region was Latin America and the Caribbean. In the last 20 years, I, I had the, the fortune to, to work directly with ministers, with uh, people that were every day develop, establishing policy, public policy, but also interacting with, with the private sector, with some enterprises in different fields. And, and one, of the, one of the things that I learned very quickly is that what we call decision makers, you know, being public officers or, or uh, business people, Decision makers want to make good decisions for, for different reasons, either to, to get richer or to get re-elected, but they want to make good decisions. And um, it, it's really interesting when, when you are able to take good scientific or technological information and translate it to a language that is understandable and usable by these decision makers, you have this incredible impact. On the one hand, usually the decisions are better. On the other hand, this decision maker that often is a, a, a public officer, starts putting a lot of value on, on the academic sector, on the research sector that didn't used to put before. So. This is what I learned. This is, it has been extremely stimulating in the last 15 years to see how, in, in some cases, good science and good technology starts informing the process of elaborating public policy. As a lead scholar of this new program, of the Nexus program, as short-term goals, uh, I am expecting that this group of scholars, these 20 brilliant scholars that we were lucky to get, they will be able to learn or learn more than what they know now to interact with other disciplines. For example, I think it's going to be really interesting to see economists interacting with energy persons, with health, public health persons. 
and, and trying to, to develop this integrated, social integrated view. For example, uh, if somebody is proposing a, a new technology for a windmill, I want to see a private company or a government of that country to take that information and, and de further develop. Those are our immediate short-term uh, goals. Longer-term goals, I believe that we, as a group, can help to, to create this change in culture that I believe we need, especially, I would say, in Latin America and the Caribbean, which is to, to ensure that the process of elaborating policies is done with the best possible information. So, uh, you know, as all of us know, when you are a, a public officer or if you are a businessman, a lot of time you have to act very quickly and you don't have a lot of time to get a lot of information, a lot of instinct, and that's fine. That's part of the skills that you need. On the other hand, we in the world, we, we have a lot of examples of how very good policies are established when they access the best available information. Well, wh what I'm hoping is that this is a culture that is established in Latin America and the Caribbean. You, the, the good policy makers are those that are best informed. Some of the impacts that I expect that Nexus will have on the, on the region is what I was saying before. I, I hope in the long term that we, we help to this change in culture. Uh, uh, a new culture in which decisions are really well informed, where science is uh, interested, yes, in publishing, yes, in advancing, yes, in, in you know, in the typical uh, objectives of the, of the scientific community, but also in producing information that is socially relevant, that can inform policy, that can inform decisions. That's what I expect.